here we are, 200 bucks. Hi everyone, my name is Brittany from Brittany Loves Reading and this vlog is going to be a little bit special because in this vlog I will be reading my 200th book of the year. When I set my Goodreads goal for 200 at the beginning of the year, I actually wasn't sure if I could hit it. I cannot believe that I'm hitting it on October. And I just wanted to pick a book that was going to be really special. I had debated between a couple of books. Jackal was one of the ones that I was potentially going to do, but then the audiobook is a kind of a long wait, so that got taken off the list. But there is a book that just recently got released that I have been thrilled to pick up bought it very quickly when it came out, and I've been really, really wanting to read it. So I actually thought, you know what? That's the perfect book for my 200th book, and that is Ink Blood Sister Scribe by Emma Torres. I am so excited to be picking this up. It's such a beautiful book, and it sounds like it has a really interesting magic system. The synopsis is quite intricate, so I'm going to read a little bit of it before I come and actually do a synopsis so that I have a better idea of what's going on. But in this vlog, we're just going to be reading my 200th book and reaching my Goodreads goal. We're going to have a little bit more B-roll in this. You're just going to come with me over the next couple of days as I read Ink Blood Sister Scribe. I don't know what this vlog is going to look like because obviously I'm just starting it, but that's what it's going to be. It's going to be a little bit of life, a little bit of reading Ink Blood Sister Scribe, my thoughts on it, hitting my Goodreads goal. That's what we're doing in this video. So come along with me as I read Ink Blood Sister Scribe and read 200 books in 2023. <laughs> Yesterday was Thursday sprints for me, which is a pretty long day of sprints. I do seven hours of sprints and I ended up reading the whole of part one of Ink Blood Sister Scribe. I probably should have updated you after sprints, but I was very tired after seven hours of sprints and I didn't. So here we are. It's Friday morning and I'm going to update you now. So this follows sister Esther and Joanna. They have been separated from each other for quite a long time. Esther left when she was a teenager, an older teenager, but a teenager nonetheless. And Joanna was a bit younger. I still think a teen, but like a younger teenager. Their father was a keeper of rare magical books. He was someone who kept the books safe. These books have spells in them and they have power and it was his job to keep them safe. Both Joanna and Esther have inherited some of their father's magic, but it's very different for each of them. So they have very different places in this magical system. And for various reasons, Esther felt the need to leave. We are now following them as adults. Esther is in Antarctica at a like research lab in Antarctica. And her father has always told her that every year on November 2nd, she should leave where she is and move to someplace new because her mother was actually murdered. And 
he thinks that who killed her mother will come for Esther, if that's the case. Joanna's mother is still alive, so she has stayed home and is keeping watch over the magical books because now their father has passed away. There is definitely some resentment towards the sisters. Joanna's father actually was killed by one of the spell books about two years prior to the start of this book. So Joanna is now alone taking care of the books and I think she really resents Esther for not coming home and helping her even though really Esther's magic doesn't necessarily work that way. She would really like Esther to come back. They have not seen each other since Esther left and every year Esther moves around. She leaves where she is. She does exactly what her father says. But now that her father has passed and she is in a relationship with someone in the Antarctic research facility, she decides to stay. But that's kind of where we are right now. That's kind of what I can tell you that isn't really spoilers because this is going to be spoiler free. So I'm going to talk more about my feel of the book, the world building writing style after this versus like the actual plot points. This kind of lyrical magical system is something that I typically really enjoy. And this book is living up to that. It's what I thought it was going to be. And it's it's doing a really good job at being that for me. This book is separated into a part one, part two, part three situation. I didn't know that the last time I spoke to you. So I think I'm going to just check in at the end of every part because that makes the most sense. Today, my goal is to actually finish Inkblood Sister Scribe. That may be a tall order, but tonight I'm supposed to start a 48-hour readathon for Reading with Merb. Will this be done by then? Absolutely not. It will not be. This will be the first book I read during that 48-hour readathon. I might get part two done before then. Part three, probably not. But I am over the halfway point. So even though it is a tall order to finish today, I think I can do it. You, you'll see. Long time no see. Actually, it hasn't been that long. It's been about three hours. Instead of editing and doing all the things I was supposed to do, I jumped right into reading because that's what I wanted to do. So I read part two of Ink Blood Sister Scribe. This book is so interesting and in how all the threads are coming together in this book. It's coming together in a way I did not anticipate. We just kind of had a reveal for the characters and for us as well at the end of part two. And I did not see it coming at all. Not even a little bit. And I kind of had a moment of like gasping when it was revealed because I, I didn't see it coming. Maybe I should have, but I did not. I did not put the pieces together. And it was so fun discovering it in the way the author wanted me to discover it. One thing I don't think I mentioned in my last update was the magic system. This magic system is so different and interesting. So basically there is a mix of like book magic. So there's magical books and blood magic and they are connected together in a way as well. So as we kind of talked about, Joanna is like in charge of keeping the book safe. Her father was also in charge of that and he died as a result of one of the books. But I don't think I went into what exactly the books are. So the books are spells that are written by someone called the scribe and they are written with ink that is made from the scribe's blood and only scribes can create books. But only certain people can read books and use the power of the books and hear the books. I kind of talked about that, that Joanna can hear the books. So anyway, so it is kind of like blood magic and there's also ways where blood magic comes into play as well around magical mirrors so that you can pass information between mirrors or see between mirrors. The books are also put together in a really kind of interesting but like disgusting way. So the books are, like I said, made out of ink that is made from the scribe's blood. The binding is like hair. It's not human hair. It seems to be like animal hair, but like it's really an interesting magic system that I definitely have not seen before. This kind of magical book that is made out of parts of humans and animals to make them living and magical. I really think that's such an interesting take on this magic system in this world. And it kind of explains the title a little bit too, Ink, Blood, Sister, Scribe. So I think that's really what I think is like the standout thing in this book is the magic system and the atmosphere. Things happened in this part two that I 
did not think were going to connect together. So they are connected and I was shooketh. And I wanna just keep reading, but I really do need to edit. So first I'm going to edit. And then I am on sprints tonight with Ren. So if I don't get to this before then, I will probably read part three on sprints. It depends on how long it takes to edit that video. Actually, didn't read any more of Ink Blood Sister Scribe yesterday. So this morning I knew I had to finish that. And luckily I ended up being on Margaret Sprints. So that is where I finished this book. And I've officially finished Ink Blood Sister Scribe and officially have read 200 books this year. I cannot believe it. I don't know how I did it. I mean, I do. I, I've been busy. Content creation, all sorts of things have led to this moment, but here we are, 200 books. I'm gonna give this four stars. For me, the shining part of this book is the magic system and this idea of these magical books and the kind of collecting of these magical books and who has access to these magical books, who doesn't. We kind of see the disparity in that throughout the book as well and the commentary on that, which was really interesting, especially in part three, which was what I read today. That was a big part of part three. And it was really an interesting topic on kind of who has the magic and should they have it? Should it be more spread out among other people, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. My only issue with this was a little bit at the ending. In the ending, there was a little bit of this is happening. No, wait, this is happening. No, wait, this is happening in a very short period of time. And it kind of was like plot whiplash a little bit at the very end. That's never something that I particularly love in a book. I'd rather you just go with one idea and kind of flesh it through versus having a lot of flip-flop. I do love a big reveal moment, but have a reveal moment, don't have something, then go change it, then change it back. And that's just never something that I like in a book. Luckily, it's not in that many, but Whenever it is, it's just always something that I don't particularly love. And unfortunately, the last little bit of this book was like that to me. And it was the only thing that really just kind of stood out as like a little bit of a critique that I could critique the book for. Other than that, I really enjoyed this book. The characters were nice. The commentary was nice. The magic system was really, like I said, kind of the standout thing for me with these magical books and the blood magic. And that's what really stood out to me overall. I am kind of sad it's a standalone. I could have used much more of these characters and this story. I would gladly read more in this magical system. And I'm, I'm kind of sad it's a one-off, to be honest. Maybe there will be more to be told. I think there are other stories you could tell with these characters and with this magic system. So maybe in the future, there will be something there as well. I had a great time with this book and I'm really glad that it was my 200th book. Anyway, that's the end of this vlog. We're all done. Thanks for coming along with me for this vlog and me reading my 200th book. I hope you enjoyed it. Please like, comment, and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.